So recently I made a video about The King, which is a film starring Henry VII. Well, it doesn't actually, that's completely wrong. It's a film about Henry V starring Timothy Chalamet. Brilliant intro. So recently I made a video about the king and how accurate the Battle of Agincourt was in the portrayal in this film. And a lot of people in the comments section said something like, but wouldn't Henry have had a French accent or be speaking French? And you know what I say to that? No, he wouldn't be. All right, everyone. So thank you very much for watching. This has been History with Hilbert. But then, okay, I guess the question then would be, when did English kings stop speaking French and start speaking English? So this video is going to be about when English kings started to speak English. Now remember that this question really should be, when did English kings stop speaking French and start speaking English again? Because history doesn't start in 1066 with the conquest of the Normans. English kings spoke English in the Anglo-Saxon period. Granted, this English does look rather different to the English that we speak and write today, but this is in fact Old English it's from the preface to the Pastoral Care, which was possibly written by King Alfred the Great himself. That's something to bear in mind. But of course, in 1066, the Normans from the northern part of France invaded England and defeated the English King Harold Godwinson in the Battle of Hastings, and this starts the Norman period of English history. Now, the Norman nobles were French speakers. They were actually speaking Norman French, which is something that I want to get into in another video because that adds some very interesting things. It's an interesting language in its own right. It still is a language today. Obviously, that would have been an older form just as Old English is an older form of English, but it also has some interesting, well, there's some interesting things come from the fact that it was Norman French rather than, uh, let's say, you know, French French that influenced English. But that's for another video. This is also we get words from uh, this Norman French, so we get words like beef, like pork, and forest. A lot of the time, these words you'll know that you know beef. Uh, well, it's not really a, a, an English cognate for beef, but with pork, you know, it's from a pig. With beef, it's from a cow. For forest, you can say something like wood. A lot of the time, we have an English variant of this word that has also come into modern English from French. And sometimes we also get uh, a few grammatical rules from French, but it's mostly vocabulary, especially the kind of posher, more higher class vocabulary that comes in from the French language. Now, of course, William was a Norman and the majority of the knights in his army were Norman, but there were also some who spoke Picard, there were also some Flemings and some Bretons as well, but Flemish and Breton have, have not really influenced English very much at all because of this, but essentially Picard is important and there were some other French-like languages that were being spoken or dialects, it's unclear how different these were at the time. And so this amalgamation that came to be spoken in England became known as Anglo-Norman French and this was spoken for several hundred years years it evolved, it was used as a written text, as legislative language, as well as a spoken language by the aristocracy. Now, French was reinforced because, of course, this was the, the nobility was speaking French, but the general population, the most people were still speaking English. Now, the French speaking was then reinforced because the nobility and indeed the royals were getting married to princesses from France and from to noblewomen from France. So, for example, I can think of the top of my head of Eleanor of Aquitaine, uh, people like Margaret of Anjou. These were queens of England and they, of course, were speaking French as a first language and all the kings well, throughout the centuries after after William were speaking French as their mother tongue. This was the higher class. And for the first hundred years as well, it was the nobility. They were all speaking French as their first language. But the nobility did start to marry into English noble families as well. And there is a shift then that occurs in the nobility first that they start to pick up English. They start to be being able to speak English. Of course, it's very useful to be able to speak English when the vast majority of the population doesn't speak French. There are as well, of course, lots of people in the general population who wanted to learn French because it's a status language, it meant you could communicate with your betters, but also eventually the nobility start to switch over to English just because of it, it makes life quite a lot easier, as well as the fact that they were at war with the French. Uh, this is, of course, the Hundred Years' War, and there were instances before then, the severing of the ties with the uh, lands in France. But I'll get onto that in just a second. However, for the kings, you know, we do get a picture that this is changing as well. 
For example, Richard II in 1381, during the Great Peasants' Revolt, uh, led by Watt Tyler, he actually goes up and he speaks to the rebels. And of course, if he's speaking to the rebels, it's the Peasants' Revolt. These guys clearly aren't speaking French, so this must mean that Richard could speak English. And we have evidence for other English kings before him as well being able to speak English. But this is quite a nice example because actually it's the successor to Richard, this bloke, who is Henry IV. Now, Henry IV is also known as Henry Bolingbroke because Henry IV actually usurped the throne. He took it from Richard by force and probably killed him in the tower later on and that's quite an important thing now his mother wasn't french and his father john of gaunt uh, is one of the founders of the house of lancaster that would that would go on to to rule england uh, would have several monarchs three in total um that lasted a while anyway and then you get the wars of the roses of course but what's important is that he usurped the throne and this means that he wasn't raised as a prince he was just raised as a member of the nobility and as i already mentioned the nobility was switching over into english uh, already had done so during this period and so he was raised in english as his mother tongue not french like all the kings of england had been up to that point so when he became king that meant he was the first king of england after william the conqueror uh, to be having uh, English as a first language, as the his mother tongue. And of course, this is then the same for his son, Henry V, who is, of course, the Henry V from the king. He's also the first one, interestingly enough, to start to write in English. The written record is then being kept in English as well. This had always been done in French, and his personal correspondence was actually written in English as well. So this really is his, his first language and the language that he's using uh, pretty much all the time. He did speak French, I think we're fairly certain about that, uh, he probably spoke several languages, but English was his first language. And of course, another important point for Henry V's reign, less so for Henry IV's reign, but this was also something that was playing during the time of Edward III and of Richard II, is that the English were at war with the French. So, you know, it's probably not a good idea, genuinely, to be speaking the same language as the people you're fighting and that, you know, potentially a majority or definitely a majority of your army at the time would be speaking a different language if the king is speaking the same language as the people he's sending those guys out to go and fight and die against that's you know it's not great so there is definitely that kind of sense that they switch over into english because that's their language and it's not the language of the people they're fighting which which was french that definitely plays a part so the hundred years war also important for the language shift there all right, everyone, so this has been quite a quick video, but I saw quite a few comments on the King video, and I wanted to go into this. Of course, I love my languages, and especially history and things like that. So if you put them together, I just enjoy making random short little videos like this about when the language changed in England. Now, I do have a video up about the Normans, which I'd highly recommend you watch. Um, I'm going to have another one up, or I may already have one up, I honestly do not know, uh, about the Anglo-Norman language, or the Norman language, and how that differs from uh, sort of your standard French and the kind of interesting effects that has on certain words and rules in English. So I hope you uh, have enjoyed or will enjoy that one. This is how chaotic I am. I don't know when I'm going to record anything or when I upload anything. It's it's uh, student life. But thank you very much for watching. I've been History with Hilbert and I hope you join me again soon.